Canada's Wonderland opened in 1981, part of the King's Entertainment Company that already had parks in Mason, Ohio, Doswell, Virginia, and Charlotte, North Carolina at the time. This park was part of the big Paramount sale in 1992, and then the Cedar Fair sale in 2006. And over the last 15 years, this has become one of the world's premier parks. Out of all the parks across the world, only two have more coasters in Canada's Wonderland with 18. I've been to this park twice, once in 2018 and again in 2023. I've ridden all the coasters, and today I'm ready to rank them up. These are the coasters of Canada's Wonderland, from worst to best. Before we start, if you can drop this video a like, I'd appreciate it. It helps with the YouTube algorithm. And if you're new here and love coaster rankings, please give me a sub. Also, a couple channel plugs. Airtime Thrills Raw Footage. I made this so other coaster YouTubers can find copyright-free off-ride footage. Also, Home Run Productions. If you also happen to love baseball, check this one out. Number 18, Time Warp, a Zamperla Volaire, opened in 2004. This was a Paramount edition, opening as Tomb Raider The Ride, reusing its theming after Cedar Fair took over and now known as Time Warp. This flying coaster model debuted in 2002, and less than 10 were sold. This was the first one I got to experience, and it was one of the worst rides I've ever had. You stand in a cage, it tilts you forward, you spiral up a lift, and it just goes back and forth, going into dips and twists, trying to make it seem like you're flying. My biggest problem was the pads around my ears. You can't see where you're going and it's very jerky. And every two seconds, I was slamming my head from side to side. Other Volaires don't have this, so I don't know why this one does. I currently have this as the worst coaster in operation, so obviously it's in last place here. Number 17, Flight Deck, a Vacoma SLC, opened in 1995. Another Paramount edition, this opened as Top Gun and kept its jet fighter theme, one of three coasters that Cedar Fair renamed Flight Deck. When it comes to SLCs, most of them are bad. Some are just worse than others. I rode Flight Deck once in 2018, but I got the front row, so I didn't think it was that bad. I heard this one was terrible, so when I came back in 2023, I rode the back, and now I see what everyone's talking about. I had to ride this very defensively, careening through 2,260 feet of track at 50 miles an hour, going into five inversions. The track was very rattly, and with those big, bulky, over-the-shoulder restraints, you gotta watch your head. I was happy when this one was over. Number 16, Taxi Jam, an ENF Milo family coaster, opened in 1998. Paramount added this one also. This opening is Taxi Jam, and so it remains. This is a simple oval layout, a twisted first drop in an airtime hill, passing under an arch of smashed up cars before turning back to the station. These ENF Milo models are good at giving you some quick jarring hills and tight turns, but in the end, it's the park's smallest coaster in a very simple kid's layout, and doesn't deserve to be any higher. Number 15, Mighty Canadian Mindbuster, a Curtis D. Summers wooden coaster, opened in 1981. Canada's Wonderland opened with five coasters, and this was one of them. It stands 90 feet tall, drops down 87 feet, covers 3,800 feet of track, 56 miles an hour, and it's very basic. It goes out and back and ends with a helix. I've ridden this twice and pretty much had the same opinion both times. On the first drop in the first hill, I actually got some airtime and it was pretty smooth. Then the airtime went away and so did the forces. The ride turned around, and it felt like it was running on gravel in the second half. It was crazy rough. There isn't much that's redeeming about this ride. Maybe just ride it once and move on. Number 14, Silver Streak, of Acoma Hang and Bang, opened in 2001. Another gift from Paramount. This is your standard family suspended model. It's small, compact, clonable, and usually these are painful. One redeeming thing about Silver Streak is the over-the-shoulder restraints. I've ridden some of these where, on every turn, your head goes crashing into the restraint. In this case, the restraint was more wide set and away from your head, so that wasn't a problem. Still, a bit shaky, but it wasn't a big deal. 1,122 feet of track, 49 feet tall, 26 miles an hour, winding around and giving kids their first ride on a coaster under the track. Number 13, Fly, a mock wild mouse, opened in 1999. Yeah, Paramount again, flooding this park with small coasters. This being the large park wild mouse model that's defined by a 50 foot drop to start. When I rode this last, it was actually better than I remember. These rides can make it or break it based on how much is trimmed. And at the end of the night, right before close, that thing was not trimmed at all. We went flying around those turns and it was a really fun ride. This is the same layout as Coast Rider at Knott's, but that's so slow because of all the trims. Fly, at least for me, was running great. Not sure if that's how it always is. 
Number 12, Wonder Mountains Guardian, an art engineering dark ride coaster, opened in 2014. Cedar Fair decided to put a roller coaster inside the park's centerpiece, Wonder Mountain. This is mostly a dark ride, but has a little bit of coaster track. Starting inside the mountain, turning out of it, rising up 60 feet, dropping and curving back into the mountain, and that's where this becomes a shooting dark ride. You shoot at targets and collect points, and at the end, you're confronted with a dragon and hit the best part of the ride, a drop track. When I rode this in 2018, it had 3D glasses and it was much more intense and immersive. In 2023, no glasses, no sound on the big finale, and it seemed like it was a shell of itself. I don't know what was going on with it, but it almost seemed like it was an attraction on its way out. Very weird for Cedar Fair to let a ride get this bad. Number 11, Snoopy's Racing Railway, an art engineering family launch coaster, opened in 2023. I got there just in time to ride this brand new family ride, and it was impressive. You make two laps around the course, starting with a tire launch, going through a doghouse, getting a second booster launch, winding over the footpath and back to the station. This is one of the smoothest coasters I've ever ridden, but it was pretty forceless. For a family ride, that's understandable. It's cool to have a launch on a family coaster, and this has a pretty strong layout. Number 10, Ghoster Coaster, a Curtis D. Summers family wooden coaster, opened in 1981. Another park original. It's no surprise this found its way into the park. These family wooden coasters were built at all the other King's Entertainment Parks, and this one opened as Scooby's Gasping Ghoster Coaster. 41 feet tall, 39 foot drop, over 1300 feet of track, 35 miles an hour, a double out and back layout. This is one family coaster that actually pulls some force. You get some pops of airtime in the back. Just like it's nice to have a launch family coaster, it's nice to have a wooden family coaster, and these are great rides no matter where you go. Number 9. Thunder Run, a Mock Rides Powered Coaster, opened in 1981. When this opened with the park, it was called Blauer Enzian, named after the ride model. After five seasons, this was relocated into the mountain and the layout was altered. This has just over a thousand feet of track, no lift, no launch, entirely powered, hitting 40 miles an hour and winding in and out of the mountain, going through some great tunnels with lights. And although some people might find this to be one of the park's weaker rides, I had a lot of fun with it this past summer. It's just a pure fun family coaster, and part of that is how it keeps its speed the whole way through. Number 8, Dragonfire, an Aero Looper, opened in 1981. One of the park's original coasters, only one of them went upside down. In fact, Dragonfire was one of the first coasters in the world to go upside down four times, tying the record set by Carolina Cyclone the year prior. This stands 78 feet tall, drops down 76 feet, then flies into back-to-back -back vertical loops. It makes a turn and then hits back-to-back -back corkscrews, then goes into a mid-course brake run, dives down and into an upward helix before the brakes. It's your typical early arrow looping layout, and I thought, for the most part, it was pretty forceful and enjoyable. My only warning is to watch for those corkscrews. You might feel some potholes here, but that's about it. Canada's Wonderland has done a good job maintaining this old arrow. Number 7. The Bat of Acoma Boomerang, opened in 1987. This was one of the early boomerangs, dating all the way back to the 80s, and it's still going strong. There's not much to say about it. It's your typical standard boomerang, 116 feet tall, 47 miles an hour, three inversions going forward, three going backward. There are dozens of these around the world, and they pull some pretty intense forces. The best part being the stomach dropping loop taken backwards. I didn't get to ride this on my last trip because the line was so long, but I did get one on my first trip. Number 6, Wild Beast, a Curtis D. Summers wooden coaster, opened in 1981. The last of the original coasters, one of three wooden coasters. I think this one is the best. 82 feet tall, 78 foot drop, 56 miles an hour, over 3,100 feet of track. I rode this in 2018 and I thought it was a train wreck. I could only focus on how bad it was beating me up. In 2023, it was no different. It was unbearably rough. But this time, I saw the diamond in the rough. This actually has a good layout and some very good forces. As horribly rough as it was, if it had a shorter line, I probably would have gone back for another ride. I'm that big of a sucker for good forces, and I walked away having a much better opinion of the ride. My internal organs and spine don't agree, but they don't get the final say. Number 5. Backlot Stunt Coaster, a Premier Rides Launch Coaster, opened in 2005. This was the last Paramount Edition, and their best. It opened as Italian Job Stunt Coaster, only using that name for three years before Cedar Fair had to use a more generic theme. This is a clone that also went to King's Island and King's Dominion. At first, a very well-themed family-style launch coaster, and over time, it's lost some effects, but it's still a very unique ride experience. Yes, it is made to be family-friendly, but it uses an LIM launch to get up to 40 miles an hour, and it'll make you gray out going up that tight helix. You dip and dive around some theming, 
drop into a dark section and burst out the billboard before you hit the brakes. On my ride in 2023, we barely sat down on the train before it was dispatched, so very impressive ops. However, we rolled right through the helicopter scene, and there's no backlot stunt coaster sign on the billboard. So, just like Wonder Mountain's Guardian, it almost seems like this ride has one foot out the door and they're not taking care of it. Number 4. Vortex, an aero suspended coaster, opened in 1991. This was the last edition from King's Entertainment, and while some of these suspended coasters are more family friendly, this one is not. It brings you up the mountain, turns around at the top, and then drops off the mountain at 85 feet, hitting 55 miles an hour, rising up and swinging out, and then it flies over the water and lower the ground. A very short ride, but one that's relentless and leaves you having to catch your breath at the end, covering 2,361 feet. I couldn't believe how fast we hit the final brakes. It seemed like it could have gone on for another 1,000 feet, no problem. After 32 years, it did seem a bit janky, but really, nothing to complain about. It's an old arrow. It is what it is. Number 3. Yukon Striker, a B&M dive coaster, opened in 2019. The park's newest thrill coaster is absolutely huge. This shattered the record for world's tallest dive coaster, standing only 223 feet but dropping 245 feet into an underwater tunnel. It then goes into an Immelman, a zero-g winder, a vertical loop, which is new on a dive coaster, another Immelman, and then it hits the brakes, drops down and into a helix before the ride ends. It's by far the most dynamic dive coaster ever built, four inversions and over 3,600 feet long, but I personally wasn't a big fan. I didn't really like the vest restraints. I didn't get any airtime on the drop, but I did enjoy how long you got the free fall, and I wasn't a big fan of the inversions, although the loop is pretty good because of how fast you fly through it. The section after the mid-course has been ridiculed since it opened. It's a very pointless finale, and I totally agree with everyone on that. Yukon Striker's a fun ride, but I did not enjoy it as much as I thought I would. Still, a dive coaster is always a good choice for any park, so this is a winner for Canada's Wonderland. Number 2. Behemoth, a B&M Hyper, opened in 2008. This was Cedar Fair's first investment into the park, and it proved that this would be one of the chain's new favorites. This rises up 230 feet, hits 77 miles an hour, covers over a mile of track, featuring big camelbacks before hitting a tight turnaround, then flying over three more camelbacks before hitting the mid-course brakes. Then, it winds down a helix, twists around into one more airtime hill before the ride ends. As far as B&M hypers go, this is one of the lower ones on my list. But if you love pure floater airtime, you're going to have a lot of fun on this ride. I rode this once in the morning and the airtime was very gentle. It definitely needed to warm up. I came back for a ride before close, and this time it was much more powerful. Just keep that in mind if you ride this early in the day. Be sure to come back later. Number 1. Leviathan, a B&M Giga, opened in 2012. This was B&M's first Giga, rising up 306 feet and diving all the way into a tunnel, hitting 92 miles an hour, going into massive airtime hills, low to the ground turns to showcase its speed, going right over the front entrance of the park and greeting everyone coming in. Even though it covers almost 5,500 feet of track, it kind of feels like a short ride. Still, as the prototype Giga, trying to give a different ride experience than their Hyper, focusing more on speed but also mixing in some airtime, it's an excellent ride, a solid top 50 coaster for me. And that drop in the back row seems to last forever and you float all the way down. 11 years later, Leviathan is still the park's signature ride, and the best the park has to offer. I just want to mention the one coaster that got removed from Canada's Wonderland. That's right, one coaster over the course of 42 years. That was Skyrider, a Togo stand-up. This came to the park in 1985, one of three Togo stand-ups that came to the King's Entertainment chain. 88 feet tall, 84 foot drop, 51 miles an hour, and one vertical loop ending with a helix and small bunny hops. These became outdated pretty quick, and by 2014, it was torn out. Its plot of land is now being used for Yukon Striker. I never rode this, but I did ride Shockwave at King's Dominion, and based on that not-so-pleasant experience, I guess I would place this at number 11, right behind Snoopy's Racing Railway and right ahead of Wonder Mountain's Guardian. If you've been to Canada's Wonderland, let me know what you think. What would you move around? What other points would you have included? Let me know in the comments below. Before you go, don't forget to drop a like, and if you're new here and love coasters, please give me a sub. Thank you all for watching, and I'll see you all next time.